All right, this video is for the people that are struggling, ran into an error, or maybe just want to see all the things that can go wrong in the future so that they can prevent it then. If you had no issues and you just wanna jump ahead, go right there. Otherwise, let's dive in and dissect what could have gone wrong. So in our project, we've only typed two lines of code, but even at this point, there's several different ways that things could be breaking. So let's take a look at the first one, which is gonna be a compile time error. This is something that's gonna make it so you can't even run your game. So we have speed and direction right here, but if we accidentally typed it wrong, well, it's not going to be green anymore. Instead, it's gonna to change to blue, which is a variable that we create, but because we haven't created a variable yet, uh, this this is not right. But if we had a spelling error of any kind, it's gonna come up like this, and in here, it's gonna have a little yellow triangle. This warning means that you've only referenced this variable one time. Now, in a create event, that is normally okay, because this is where we actually make our variables for the first time, and a lot of times we don't get them set until other events. But if you see this warning, it means that if you try to access this variable, if you try to read from it, you're going to crash. Now, we won't crash, so this isn't necessarily a compile time error here. If we were trying to read this value and or get something from it, then we would have a compile time error. So I guess I misspoke just a little. This is actually gonna be just a runtime bug. Not an error, because it's just a bug. So if we run this right now with this yellow little warning, our character isn't going to move in the slightest. And that's because we haven't altered the speed of our character. Instead, we've created a variable called sped and set it equal to 50. So to get speed working, we have to actually have it be this green. It's a built-in variable and it actually controls the movement of our object. So if you spelled anything wrong, you're gonna have that little yellow warning, double check. When it comes to capitalization, it has to be exactly right. Now, there are no built-in variables or functions with capitalization, but when we start making our own variables, I will be using capitalization. I'll be using a special way of writing just called camel case and it will have capitalization. Later on when we use certain functions and we have to type in like words, like uh, just real words, not necessarily coding words, I'm explaining this terribly, when we have to put in a string is what I'm trying to say. I was trying to avoid using the word string because it's kind of a technical term that I haven't talked on yet. But when we have to type in in quotes, something like this, and we have to type it in exactly correct, otherwise it will fail, uh, that can cause a problem when we run our game. If it's not right, the game will just crash. So spelling is important and essential and the computer is stupid, you have to tell it exactly what it is you're trying to do and access and read and set or whatever. So another problem you could have come into is your object isn't actually moving even though your code is correct. The most likely case for this is you have a sprite instead of an object. So I'm gonna delete my object right here and let's say you did accidentally bring in your sprite and you just clicked, oh, create. I was, of course it was my object, that's what I meant to drag in, so that's what I dragged in. But now we have a new layer called assets. It looks like an object but it's not, it's our sprite. So if we run it, a sprite is just an image. It is just pixels, no code. So even though our code and our object is correct, this isn't gonna do a single thing because it's just pixels on the screen. If you have an asset layer here, you probably have this issue. Delete the asset layer by right clicking on it and going to delete, click on instances, and make sure you have OBJ player. If you're not naming your assets over here like me or something similar to me, you're going to encounter problems where you're gonna have lots of objects, lots of sprites, and you might not be able to tell them apart. 
and so when the time comes to bring them into your game, you might be dragging in the wrong one. Be sure you're bringing in the object on the instances layer. Otherwise, it'll look like it should be working even when in reality it shouldn't be because the computer is doing exactly what we tell it to. Now, the other thing might be you can't actually see your object at all. It's possible that you moved your background layer up here, you created another instance layer below it, whatever the case may be. Uh, you might have your player object inside your room all over the place and you just can't see it. The reason for that is every layer has a depth. So the background layer in general is the one furthest away because it's in the back. And then we have our instances layer, which is more up front here. I'm trying to set this up so that you can see it with the camera I've got here. So background instances, it's in front of it. But if we move the background layer in front of the instances, all of a sudden you can't see the instances at all. You also couldn't see the assets or anything else inside of there. So if your background layer is on top of your layers, left click, drag it underneath, and then your player will appear again. Those are the three main problems that I've seen. If you've encountered something different where it's not working, let me know. I guess the only other one that I could come up with is if you didn't make a create event, but instead you made a different event like destroy. Let's say we cut with control X and paste it into the destroy event. If you did this when we ran it, this also would make your object not do anything. These are objects, they have code, but the create event is completely empty. If you don't have the create event here, if you have it in a different event, this won't work. So that is also another thing that could possibly go wrong. If you don't have a sprite associated with your object, that's another thing. So we can actually reset this to none. And then when you're dragging your object into your room, it's gonna look like this little question box. And if we run this, it has no sprite. It's got no pixels it's supposed to show. Its code is working and running, but you can't see it. So your object must have a sprite associated with it. Uh, if you somehow manage to check check this visible box undone, well, that's gonna make it not be able to be seen even if it has a sprite. I'm trying to cover everything I can think of here. This is very unlikely that you would have checked that, uh, but it's possible. That's about everything I can come up with. If you found another error, let me know. You can zip up your project by going to File, export project as a YYZ, and then you can email it to me or send me a link on YouTube or somewhere and let me know and I can take a look at this. Because if you found a unique error, I like to be able to discover those so that I can talk about them in future videos. And I always love helping people out because I know when I got started, I would not have been able to stick with it without the help of a few people that just helped me solidify these concepts in my brain because we're starting slow, but the, I mean, I had trouble starting slow and I'll get into my story as we go, but let's just say it took me many, many tries and a lot of money to finally be able to understand how coding and programming and game development works. So don't be embarrassed, don't be ashamed, share your errors, other people are encountering them too. I wanna know about them because I want to continue knowing how to help people better. But that's all for this video. So I'll see you in the next one. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.